Hello students, welcome to Learn Guru classes. So today we are going to discuss about nutrition in human beings. So this will include digestion in human beings in detail. So after watching this video, as usual, your concepts about this topic will be very clear. So with this note, let's begin our class. Human beings take food in order to obtain energy so as to perform basic like activities like walking, running, etc. So human beings undergo holozoic nutrition that is the food they take exists either in the form of solid or liquid. Generally the food that we take may be carbohydrates, fats and proteins. These are very complex substances and cannot be directly utilized to obtain energy. So these complex substances are broken down into simpler substances so that it is utilized by each and every cells of the body. So this process of breaking complex substances of food into simpler substances is known as digestion. Digestion itself is a very complex process that consists of the following steps. The first one is ingestion that is the entry of food into the mouth. Second is digestion breaking of complex substances into simpler substances. Absorption process of carrying the digested food to the blood. The fourth one is assimilation that is process of carrying absorbed food from blood to the different organs of the body and the last one is ejection that is removal of unwanted wastes from the body. The journey of food starts from the mouth. So mouth is considered as a slit that is between the two movable lips. Okay. So the entry of food takes from the mouth then comes the buccal cavity. So buccal cavity is the hollow cavity that is enclosed by the two jaws that is upper jaw and lower jaw as well as these cheeks. Okay. So buccal cavity includes two things that is teeth and tongue. So you know the function of teeth isn't it? The food that we take is broken down into smaller and smaller pieces by the teeth and tongue secretes a juice that is called as saliva. So saliva tries to soften the food by mixing it with the food so that it can easily pass through the rest of the digestive tract. Apart from that the tongue has salivary glands that secretes one enzyme called as salivary amylase. So what is the function of salivary amylase? It's an enzyme which tries to break down complex carbohydrate like starch into simple sugar. So this is the first stage where the first part of the digestion occurs right in the mouth. Now from the mouth it is necessary for the food to travel to the stomach. So this food passes to the stomach via a food pipe which we call it as esophagus. Esophagus is a muscular tube. Okay. So what is the property of muscles? It generally contracts or expands. So food travels to the stomach via the esophagus by the peristalsis movement that is contraction expansion contraction expansion so that food can easily pass into the stomach. The food now reaches the stomach. Stomach is the place where maximum digestion occurs. Stomach is considered as elastic that is if you fill the stomach with food it will expand. Stomach has contains gastric gland that secretes three types of juices. First one is hydrochloric acid, the second one is pepsin and the third one is mucus. So hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid is 
acid right so it produces an acidic medium and tries to digest the food why it produces an acidic medium because the enzyme that is pepsin is basically pepsinogen okay and it this hcl activates the pepsinogen second is pepsin that is pepsinogen when reacts with hcl it produces pepsin so pepsin is useful for digestion of protein and the third one is mucus that is it protects the inner lining of the stomach so that it can protect against the acidic medium so in this way the maximum digestion occurs in the stomach and now food travels to the small intestine the food now enters the small intestine small intestine is considered as the longest part of the alimentary canal which is actually coiled in order to make it very compact the length of the small intestine differs in different animals like herbivores that eats plants or grass so this contains cellulose so cellulose is little bit difficult to digest now carnivores if we consider okay so carnivores eat meat so meat is a type of protein so protein is comparatively easier to digest so for this reason herbivores have longer small intestine as compared to the carnivores now coming back to the small intestine in human beings the it is actually divided into three segments the first one is duodenum the upper part the middle part is jejunum and the bottom part is called as the ileum so duodenum is acts as a duct duct means opening so it acts as an opening for two types of uh, juices like bile juice and pancreatic juice to enter into the small intestine now talking about liver liver is considered as the largest gland in the human body so liver secretes a very important juice that we call it as bile juice so bile juice is secreted by the liver and stored in the gall bladder what is the function of the bile juice bile juice actually creates an alkaline medium that is it neutralizes the acidic medium that has been created in the stomach as well as it emulsifies fat emulsifies fat means it breaks fat into simpler substance simpler molecule of fat that is fatty acids now pancreas pancreas is the second largest gland in the human body pancreas secretes three types of juices for the first one is trypsin the second one is pancreatic amylase and the third one is pancreatic lipase so pancreatic digests protein pancreatic amylase digests carbohydrates or breaks carbohydrates into simpler sugars and at last pancreatic lipase that is it breaks fats into fatty acids so thus the complete digestion occurs in the small intestine itself now once the food is thoroughly digested in the small intestine that is proteins into amino acids carbohydrates into simple sugars and fat, fats into fatty acids now is the turn that these digested food should be carried to the blood and from the blood it should be distributed to the different organs of the body okay so the process of carrying the digested food to the blood is known as absorption okay so how this is done this is done in the small intestine itself because the inner lining of the small intestine consists of 
finger like projections that we call it as villi okay so villi is the acts as the barrier between the in small intestine and the blood okay so these carry the uh, uh, digested food to the blood villi villi has small, uh, larger surface area so this facilitates due to the finger like projections so greater the surface area so greater the extent of absorption so in this way food is absorbed in the small intestine after absorption it is necessary to carry the absorbed nutrients from the blood stream to the different organs of the body so this process is known as assimilation so assimilation can be defined as the process by which absorbed nutrients are carried from the blood stream to the different organs of the body coming to the large intestine it do not take part in digestion because it do not produce any uh, digestive enzymes okay because the entire process of digestion is completed in the small intestine itself large intestine is responsible for absorption of water as well as unused products that has not been digested so peristalsis movement moves the unused products from the body to the rectum so this process of removal of unwanted wastes from the body is known as ejection so with ejection this completes the entire process of digestion thus we have come to the end of digestion in human being where we have studied in detail the all the steps of digestion and the different organs involved in digestion so if you like this video please consider subscribing this channel like and share it with your friends and family so thank you so much bye bye